Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Bronze Cave, as I like to call it now. It's kind of a new little name for this, and this is a brand new name for the show. We are calling this Brass Tax. Where the beard? The beard is here, Preston. We had some people that were patiently waiting. Uh, our guest is Turlock Comics tonight, and there are some technical difficulties on the Turlock Comics side of things. Uh, he's trying to log in on his wife's computer to have like a good setup for for sound and, and video and all that you know all that stuff so uh we're letting him figure that out i might need to answer a couple questions from him over in our chat um but hey i wanted to go live so you guys aren't waiting word up hello how's it going um so it's a pretty cool show i'm excited for this uh you know we will be bringing our guest in here a little bit later we're going to talk about all the questions you guys asked about cleaning about pressing uh, about the submission process and how they do Kind of their side of things for people that have questions about that they want to know how does this work um i think it takes a lot of the hassle a lot of the pain points out of the process of doing submissions or even if you just want your books cleaned and pressed without doing the submissions it's good for that too and i think you guys if you've watched any of my videos purple eyeshadow on deck yeah here i can kind of i can tilt down to make it go away that's <laughs> the more i tilt up the more you get the eyeshadow <laughs> um but uh yeah i think if, if you guys followed along with any of my videos that i've done recently where i've done cgc unboxings for the most part i think all the recent ones have been something i've gone through Sherlock comics for oh thanks a lot man yeah the boba fett uh that includes the uh, the Ultimate Fallout 4 Triple Signature CBCS 96. Uh, they did a clean and press on that and the submission. That includes the the, um, the New Mutants 98, the Fantastic Four Annual 6 that they did, uh, three different 98 X-Men 4s, first Omega Reds, uh, and a bunch of other stuff too, of course. So really excited to share some of that stuff with you guys tonight. That'll be coming up later. If you are just joining us, yeah, basically we're encountering some technical difficulties uh, with our guest trying to get into his wife's computer and get into StreamYard. So hopefully we'll be able to resolve that soon. Uh, in the meantime, let's talk about the Super Chat Prize. Every time I do a live show, it's one of these scheduled live shows, I do like to do a Super Chat Prize. It's a good way. Oh, hey, right on. Preston uh, Preston just got his whatnot package. Uh, he says the uh, Comic Shield box was great. That's awesome. <laughs> hey, actually, funny story. I reused that from Very Gary sent that to me, and I, I wanted to see how it worked. The slab I got was in great shape. Uh, I thought, okay, I could fit a couple raw comic books in this too. So I, I wanted to use you a little bit as a guinea pig, but I knew that was a really sturdy box. So I felt pretty, pretty comfortable doing that. Uh, I'm glad that worked out. Okay. We got Danny girl comics in the house. How's it going, Danny? Um, she is getting so close to a thousand subscribers. So go check her out. If you didn't see our, our show together, you can go check that on the rewind after this show. Um, so yeah, we'll talk about the super chat prize real fast. Uh, decided to do kind of an interesting little, assortment of stuff tonight um you know the, the whole doing a slab wasn't proving very financially stable uh couldn't keep doing that uh so i have some kind of interesting raw comic books uh i went through a little bit of a spread um that's what she said <laughs> uh batman 102 first ghost maker looks like you got a little bit of a key in there uh and then another dc book will do future state uh that's uh what do they call that carazor carazor l superwoman number one that is the the b cover I think that's a really cool cover if you're a Supergirl fan. And then for the Cheesecake fans in the house, the people that know what it's all about, Chaos Number 1, that's a Midtown Comics exclusive. And that's a cool Purgatory cover. Um, I don't remember the artist's name on that one, but somebody I hadn't heard of before when I checked it out. Uh, oh, it is... Uh, Ni Rafino. Rafino is the artist. Ni Nye, I'm not really sure how to pronounce that. Um, so you get that. And then I'm throwing in a couple other things too, because, you know, that's a lot of DC. That's a lot of, um, uh, non Marvel stuff. I know there's some Marvel fans out there. So how about a trade of Deadpool kills the Marvel universe? That is a, you know, trade paperback for you there. Unread and everything. And then this is really cool. This is a, a Joe Casada Spider-Man print. So it was kind of an art print. That was kind of a neat little arrangement of prizes. So that's our super chat for tonight. Um, I'm going <laughs> to... Here, I'll go. How's it going? We'll see. Uh, <laughs> so uh, kind of checking with the chat, everybody going on. We got uh, GT Key Comic in the house. 
Uh, Rick James Biatch notes that it, it is the double plot for economics and comics and bronze. Yeah, I'm trying to move the shows to Tuesday night. That's my goal uh, to kind of get away from if I'm doing these earlier time slots, I want to get away from, you know, I know we have a lot of the same viewers, for example. Um, but, you know, I just think it's one of those things where it makes sense <laughs> uh, to get away from that time slot a little bit. Um, but also I don't have a lot of say in the, in the scheduling. Uh, this is how it worked out. I had a lot of stuff going on that I had, uh, had to do today. So this is kind of how it worked out. Um, if you guys don't know, the reason I'm so restrictive is right now I'm a stay at home dad, although I did have a job interview today that went pretty well. So that'd be kind of interesting. Uh, wish me luck. And, um, I'm wa you know, watching my daughter all the time. She's three years old. I don't really want her on stream. I don't want her running around. So I usually have to wait till she goes to bed. She's at an age where bedtime is very, you know, suggested, <laughs> but it doesn't actually necessarily happen at that time. Um, and I'm the only one here often if my wife's working. So anyways, that's the reason that we kind of stream at an earlier time or a later time. Normally, I am trying to get to this earlier time slot to get more of the East Coast folks in here. Uh, I love doing the late nights. Funny enough, I am doing a whatnot auction after this, and I decided to do a whatnot uh, later, I want to get away from all the afternoon, evening, big streamers, um, you know, people that have 40, 50 people watching at a given time. Uh, well, you know, late night comics, that worked pretty well for me on YouTube. Let's try it on whatnot. So I'm going for 8 p.m. Pacific, which is 11 p.m. Eastern, of course, uh, tonight on whatnot. I've got way different variety of stuff than you've seen me have in the last few whatnots. I was kind of just trying to like get viewers going. Um, this time I added a bunch of stuff. I'm not necessarily going to run everything, but it gives people a chance to look through the list and see what they want to call out. I've got a bunch of X-Men like from issues 100 to 200 or really like 139 to, to like 250, I guess. Um, some early X-Factor, first appearance of Apocalypse in a newsstand, bunch of slabs. We'll run whatever people want. I've got some Walmart blind packs too. Uh, so a lot of fun stuff. Hey, K-Pop, how's it going? We got Preston coming in with that first inaugural super chat. Let me get that down. Uh, Preston, thanks, man. Getting the super chat going for the first ten dollars there. So right now, Preston's walking home with the super chat prize. That's awesome. Um, so as we're kind of playing for time here a little bit, I haven't heard from my guest in a minute. I'm sure he's trying to overcome some technical hurdles. Um, what let any uh questions anything going on in the comic book biz we want to talk about um i know i have some some explaining to do i haven't really made a video in a while i've been pretty busy trying to deal with some other stuff uh you know irl as the kids say they don't still say that uh as the the 20 and 30 something year olds say <laughs> uh so i haven't really been doing a lot of videos i do have a lot of videos planned I think I'm going to tackle some fun stuff. I do want to do a video. I'm a little nervous about doing it. Uh, Todd McFarlane made some kind of interesting comments recently about female action figures. Uh, I wanted to kind of do a video covering that. So that's something I'll probably see soon. I have another top five not to buy going out soon. Um, don't know if it'll be this week. So it might be kind of a light week is what I'm saying. Um, hey, man. Good to see you too, Nathan. Uh K-pop is doing all right. That's awesome. Uh, saw you hanging out late night last night over on the economics and comics slash uh, Michael McComb slash the scumbag crew slash Robin Joel <laughs> stream last night. Uh, I think you and me were the most active ones in the chat. Um, that was fun. Uh, yeah, that was it was interesting. It was very interesting. I want to talk about that a little bit. I don't necessarily I, I haven't actually seen the interview, which is part of the reason I haven't done that video yet but I've read the articles about it. I uh, want to make sure I go actually watch the, the Shardimus prime interview first um, before I comment on it, of course. And, but from all, what I'll say, the teaser uh, here is that I think I understand part of the point. And I think a couple articles were a little harsh to be like, well, you know, it's, it's an people shouldn't say that female action figures are peg warmers. Unfortunately, as an action figure collector, part of that is true. I want more act, female action figures, personally. Um, I, I absolutely do. I, I actually really enjoy female action figures. Uh, but I do also understand it to a certain perspective. But then he went, kind of, in my opinion, way overboard on that from, from what I've read. Again, I want to watch it before I really comment too, too much on it. 
Uh, um, Cody asked, did you see the video that Journo posted where people are paying way too much for comics on whatnot compared? Yeah, it's funny. Uh, I, I feel like, um, I don't want to say we're locked at, but Chris and I often are thinking about the same thing. Uh, although I think, I think probably we have slightly different perspectives. Um, <laughs> Turlock says not good. Um, one second, guys. Let me see what our, how our guest is doing here. Um, so yeah, to kind of, sorry, just sending the messages back, uh, trying to, trying to troubleshoot here. Um, so just, it's just interesting. Like we, we often think along similar lines as far as the topics that are important to us or that we're thinking about. And one of the ways I, I'm kind of getting to the point on there is I did an interview with Skeff recently, uh, and I, I'm kind of slowly trickling out snips of that. Cause it was like a 45 minute long interview. That's a pretty daunting video for a lot of people to click on, especially casual viewers on YouTube. Uh, so I'm trying to like put those out in kind of bite-sized chunks. One of the tips that I gave in that interview was always have eBay up on like a separate window or, you know, on a second device or, you know, depends on how you do whatnot. Uh, because if you're not browsing eBay at the same time you're on whatnot, there, there's always a chance you'll over. Like I, most time I don't really need to do that. Uh, I kind of have it up. I don't necessarily jump in every you know, every single auction because I'm kind of aware of most of the prices, but there's some stuff where I'm like, I do kind of want that. How much does it go for? Uh, you know, like everybody, I look for deals and if I think something's going under FMV, I'm more likely to bid um, unless I'm, you know, it's really a hard to find book, something like that. Um, so that's kind of, you know, kind of how I approach it, but that's one of the tips I gave. So you'll be seeing that probably come out in a, in a shorter segment as well. Uh, I think it was a great video though. I think he did a good job. He brought, he kind of highlighted something that, I think a lot of people are talking about that in communities like discords I'm part of, um, uh, you know, things like that. For example, uh, I see a lot of conversation around the people overpaying on whatnot. What I don't see to kind of give the counterpoint to that, what I don't see a lot of people saying is a lot of people are losing their shirt on whatnot as sellers. And if you're a, a smaller seller, you know, and, and I'll throw myself in that. I mean, I, I'm I'm definitely bigger than some people. I've got like 330 followers, I think, or something like that, right? Um, but that's still, you know, compared to these sellers with a thousand, two thousand uh, uh, followers, that's nothing really. And so I do think that there's a bit of shark infested waters when when you have a newer seller come on there. For one thing, you have people coming in specifically because they know you won't have much competition, uh, which is you know all's fair and love and war and bidding on comics. Right. <laughs> so I think it's interesting. Uh, but I, I think, you know, I've, I've lost money on some books on whatnot. Uh, so far, I think I've done okay. And I've also done, you know, I've, I've kind of picked my battles and I'm finding my niche and there is a learning curve for that. Uh, the red light comic did that, that I did. It's kind of like the red light district was kind of the idea. I did kind of a risque, uh, sexy covers, you know, a lot of Vampirella, a lot of lady death, um, you know, swimsuit stuff from the nineties. That was my best auction. And it's completely different. You know, like I think of whatnot, I, I go on there. I don't go on there to buy that stuff. I go on there to buy bronze keys or try to go after silver age books or, or, you know, stuff that's under FMV to, to flip or because I'm looking for it from a personal collection, right? Like that's what I do. Uh, when I see stuff like that doing really well, I'm like, Oh, well I did really well in one auction. So I, I am planning on doing another one of those, uh, but I, I'm not just going to do those. I'm going to try to try to hone my skill, build my followers. But I, I do think that there's a lot, a lot of people that overpay. And and part of, and in fact, I think I see a, I'll, I'll get to everybody's comments in the chat. That I see ahead of that. Part of the reason why is the celebrity thing that he mentioned in his video, you know, and I, I don't know who the seller was. I don't really even care who the seller was that he was posting this from. I suspect it was probably from a bigger seller, right? I, I don't know, but that's what I suspect. Um, 
but uh Fizzbin's talking about getting some decent deals from Very Gary this past weekend. And I've bought from Very Gary uh a couple times now. Um one through his YouTube auctions and through his website. I've, I've three times now or so, I think. Three or four actually. And I've had great experiences with Very Gary. I, even he has to admit that on some of his whatnot sales, people overpay. And he's even said, Oh, well, people, this this isn't worth that much, kind of thing. Like he's calmed people down before on whatnot. I think that's that's interesting you know i mean at one point you know of course as a seller you don't want every single book just to go for fmv um because you know some books are going to go for less than fmv you hope some books will go over fmv at the same time i certainly don't want people to overpay by 100 200 percent or anything like that um by any stretch of the imagination um so that's kind of those are kind of my thoughts on that's a fascinating topic i really appreciate you bringing that up cody uh, you're about a second hand. The ser- yeah, exactly. The going back to the Tom McFarland thing, the serial killer thing is definitely who definitely what I what I thought was weird, right? So I definitely want to dig into that, watch that interview, and I'll probably do a follow up video on it. Uh, Trev from Shipping Guru here, uh, sh- the, the Shipping Guru. Trev, love your videos. Awesome. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. That's fantastic. Uh, sometimes I overpay, but a buck or two. Yeah, like that's the thing is if I trust the seller. And that's one thing. Like if I trust the seller, cause you know, maybe you don't see every single aspect of the book, especially if they're doing like 30 second auctions on whatnot. I, 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 you know, if I trust the seller, I might overpay by a buck or two. I might kind of consider it like almost like a tip in a way. Um, the other thing is the way shipping works out. If I've bought one or two books from that seller already, I'm going to, I'd rather pay a buck or two extra. Let's say it's a $5 comic. I'd rather pay dollars for that comic book and only pay the extra dollar for shipping rather than go to ebay where i have to pay like five to ten dollars for shipping right so that can also be smart that way but but i know chris was pointing out examples where people were paying like 80 or 90 bucks for like a 30 dollar book uh oh thank you very much i appreciate that thanks a lot has been i think we should make a buddy <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's funny a lot of people uh really like those videos um it's still it's interesting youtube continues to be kind of a mystery to me um i you know there, you guys know if you've been a long time viewer there's a lot of games on youtube i don't play i don't play the like and subscribe game i just don't believe in it i believe if you guys want to like the video you will i believe if you want to subscribe to the video you will um i personally as a viewer zone out during those parts or i kind of like fast forward past them so i just decided not to do that stuff uh i you know like on whatnot i do ask for followers i don't have a problem doing that that's part of that platform that i totally understand and and i think that you know it kind of reminds people oh yeah i should follow you i guess that's probably the same thing for youtube but my point is i just don't do it um but but youtube continues to be a mystery to me because i will i will put out a video where i'm like man this video is really interesting it's really helpful and that's you know me saying that uh, I actually don't think very highly of most of the stuff I do, but sometimes I'm like, hey, this is really good. And that video will get, you know, I think, I think like the Skeff interview, the long form has like 500 views, which is pretty small by, by my standards. Um, and then I'll do a video where I'm like, here's the top 10 comic books I want to buy in, in 2022. And I expected that video to get 500 views. And it got like, I think it's my highest viewed video. I think it got like 8,000 views. And I'm like, what did I do? <laughs> like, all I do is talk about what comic books I'm going to buy. Is, and that it's not just top 10 because top 10 lists do pretty well, but I've made top 10 lists that, you know, are like my top 10 of 2021 or whatever. And people don't really care uh, as much. I shouldn't say they don't care. They just don't care as much. Um, in my way, the only way to get deals now is in person. Yeah, I, I can understand that. And that's where I get most of my deals too, I guess. Um, I've heard a buyer or two stop people. Well, I've heard. Of, so the, the, the fascinating thing about what you just said is I've seen buyers say something like, Hey guys, you know, this book's only worth this much or whatever. And they get shouted down by cheerleaders, supporters of that person streaming. And that to me is, is interesting is interesting. Uh, still getting caught up with chat here. Um, definitely gotten good deals from you i can see both sides i also think it's the seller trying to hype a book up and people not being knowledgeable oh hey guess what guys i have some fantastic news 
we were just joined by our guest. Um, so let's bring him in since we have been waiting here. Let's say hi to Joey here. Hello. Sorry for the delay. Things got all messed up trying to get on my wife's computer. and oh, yeah. <laughs> It's all good. It's all good. Um, so this is Joey from Turlock Comics, everybody. Let's say hi to Joey. Uh, show some love in the chat for him. Uh, sorry about all the technical hurdles trying to get you in here, man. I know that's frustrating. <laughs> yeah, I just, yeah, I just a password got messed up. I'm trying to go in on my wife's computer because my computer got all jacked up, and you know, that's it happens. Sorry, no, it's all good. Uh, we were just kind of going through the chat here, kind of catching up with everybody. Um, we're talking a little bit about whatnot and everything that's going on over there. Um, and we got some some love already there. Trev saying hi. What's up? Um, so real fast, uh, let's kind of switch over to the normal agenda for the show since we are starting a little bit later. I do want to kind of get a chance to talk about everything and get to all the questions that you guys had for Turlock Comics about cleaning and pressing and how their process works, that kind of stuff too. I think that's really important and something I want you guys to walk away from the show, kind of understanding a little bit more about that process. But first... I think we should uh, get to know the man here a little bit and kind of talk to him so we know who we're talking to, right? Um, so just real fast, before I even get into to asking some of the questions, I'll just mention that Joey and I have been uh, talking, working together for a long time now. Uh, we've had a really good relationship. I just kind of started out buying some stuff from him, from his IG sales that he'd have, uh, like his claim sales and stuff on IG, make posts, had some amazing deals, some killer books. And just that kind of relationship, we just kind of started talking through that, right? Like we, uh, if you didn't know, Joey used to do YouTube content with economics and comics, doing the comic cartel. We did a little bit of a reunion over the Christmas break uh, where we kind of got those guys back together with I Got Issues and had a fun little show and everything. Um, and through through that relationship, I found some cool stuff about, about what Joey's doing with a couple other partners and a business that they are starting up. They have started up now. Uh, called Turlock Comics. And that's where we kind of enter into this whole thing where we got some opportunities for you guys for, to utilize their cleaning and pressing services, uh, to utilize their, their CGC, CBCS, EGS, all those submission services as well for grading. And uh, that's, that's kind of the really exciting stuff that I think we're going to talk about today and also some of their plans for the future. Um, so Joey, let's get to know you a little bit, man. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the, the kind of origins of what Turlock Comics is all about and how it started and who's involved? Yeah, um, that's pretty, um, say so basically it started out, I just started selling books from my personal collection because, you know, um, anybody's been, I've been collecting comics for 40 plus years. So you end up with a lot of excess stuff. I mean, it's just the way it goes. Stuff you're into 10, 20 years ago not so much into now i buy collections just to get a couple issues i was trying to get out of the collection the rest of it i'm like uh so i started a separate page uh different from my regular one just to sell and then you know i kind of shifted gears in my collecting habits and my you know perspective on the hobby i guess you could say as a whole and so we started selling kind of full time um, that's kind of when I first met you, when you first started buying, um, uh, random books from me. And then that's when I got together with my other partner, James, um, he's our presser. Um, he does like 95% of the work, uh, the cleaning and pressing. I'm more of his, uh, student when it comes to that sort of stuff. Um, I handle if, when you contact us, like I'm the one you're usually talking to, unless it's some of the sales stuff, then you'll talk to our other partner, Kyle. Um, he's kind of, kind of breaking them into the, uh, hobby industry, whatever business on, on that end of it. Um, so like to reiterate, there's me, Joey, James, he's our comic book presser, cleaner, and uh kyle he's he's our other partner um good friend um and now it's turned into turlock comics which was kind of just a online thing a home-based business kind of went official like we're we're licensed we have our you know our federal id number all that sort of stuff and then it turned into hey why don't we open a store because you know, what, what, 
that's kind of every, I guess, hobbyist in the comic book collecting world. That's, you know, I think everybody's probably thought about it at one point if you're a comic book collector. For sure. I mean, I know I did many times. And uh, so it kind of snowballed into, yeah, let's get a store. Let's get a store. And and uh, now we're about a week a week away from signing the paperwork to get the building. We had one. Some stuff happened. Um, I've talked with you about the DMs. Uh, in the DMs about, you know, we pretty much had a building purchase, but the owner decided not to disclose that they had mold, black mold. So it kind of turned into a no-go comics, mold, not really a good combo. So no. we had to shift gears, find a new location in Turlock because Turlock Comics in another city might sound a little odd. Um, and That's so we should be about right? a week away from getting the building. And then probably I would say like three weeks uh, after that, we should be opening up. Cool. And I, I just wanted to mention, uh, so Turlock is in California. It's a town in California. A lot of people, I've, I've had some questions like, what is that? It's, it's you know, it's just be like uh, Seattle comics or something like that, right? It's just Turlock comics. So yeah, we're, um, we're south of Sacramento, east of San Francisco, if that helps anybody. Um, kind of the armpit sure. central California, central <laughs> Valley, as they call it. Awesome. Um, okay, so then let's get into a couple questions. Um, I'll kind of I'll cut this section a little short just because I'm sure people want to hear all their questions get answered. Um, but I am kind of curious. I have a very good guess on the answer to this, but uh, who is your favorite Marvel comic book character? Uh, I mean, you know, obviously, you know, uh, anybody who knows me, I'm, I'm a big Hulk guy. You know, I've I've read every single issue the Hulk has ever been in. I own every single issue the Hulk has ever been in um so primarily i'm a hulk guy but you know i'm, I'm uh punisher is a very very close second with a conan being a extremely close third also nice so i, I you know, i'm just gonna ask this have you have you counted or like do you have a rough guess how many like hulk issues you have um i counted about two years ago and i had 3,172 issues. Wow. Like, you know, and counting all the, obviously the normal runs, second prints, variants, uh, guest star, you know, guest appearances, specials, yeah. crossovers. And he's the character that obviously appears in a lot of other books too. He's very popular, so. Yeah. Awesome. Well, that's, that's a killer collection. I can't even imagine like some of the gems that are in that collection are, are fantastic. Um, Mark says, why is it always got to be Marvel? And I hear you. That's specifically why I do this. Cause you know, everybody like you ask you their favorite characters and, and like Joey, they have a list. Um, and I do too. I think a lot of people do. So that's why I also ask what's your favorite DC comic book character. I mean, I guess it's kind of cliche, but I mean, I mean, I'm a huge I'm a Batman specific fan. Like I like certain eras and uh, I guess certain angles on Batman. I really like the Batman that's dark and yeah. he um, really questions his place, you know, in the war, in his war and, you know, how he justifies sacrificing Robins. And um, so, I mean, I guess it's a little cliche, but Batman's definitely, I, I just, I, I think that's one of the greatest characters ever, ever created. I mean, to be honest, like I'm a yeah. Marvel guy, but the, I mean, Batman is pretty much, I think the epitome of just awesomeness for uh, a comic book hero character. For sure, man. I, I agree with that. Totally. I just like that archetypal kind of hero character that has that dark side. It's really cool. Um, Okay, so uh, we'll ask like two more here. Uh, what is your favorite like run on any comic books of all time? Oh man, that's that's a that's a tough one. I mean, um, I, could I, be a storyline too, or something, you know. I mean, you know, there's definitely ones that are my favorites in terms of I I, I can read and reread. Like honestly, like the Punisher, his his first ongoing series in '87. I, I don't know why, but that series, I loved it. Like I have read it more times than I can count. Um, but you know, also obviously there's a lot like the red Hulk run 
yeah. you know, uh, that was one of my, that was one of the times in comics, like super excited and like, couldn't wait for the next issue to come out. And, you know, so, I mean, but then, you know, like now as I'm older, one of my favorite things to read is Savage Sword of Conan. Like to me, yeah. I love reading those. Cause that's like a true, in my head, like a true escape. Like I read it and I, I just, I get lost in that whole, the whole fantasy universe. Um, you know, I'm also an old time Dungeons and Dragons geek. So that's like right up my alley too. So, I mean, you know, um, like I said, I, I like different runs for different things, but the Red Hulk run, I would say is probably one I remember really well. Like every issue that came out, I was like at the, you know, the LCS, like open, 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 you know, waiting to see the new issue. That's crazy. Actually, not that long ago, I just went through and, and actually read that all the way through for the first time. Like I'd read bits and pieces of it, but I actually went through and, and kind of, you know, did the whole run. And I agree. Like I didn't expect to enjoy it as much as I did, honestly, because I thought like, oh, it's kind of a gimmick, you know, New Color Hulk, blah, blah, blah. I mean, we've seen that before, but it actually had some meat and bones to it. I really dug it. Um, cool. And then I guess we'll, we'll just ask one more here. Uh, who's your favorite comic book artist of all time or, or who's one of them at least? Uh, uh, Dale Keown or Mike Zeck would be like, man, I, I, I like him kind of for different reasons. I, so, I mean, I'm a huge Dale Keown fan, but Mike Zeck is like oh, yeah. some of my all time favorite covers are Zeck covers. I just, I just found out that Mike Zeck and I share the same birthday. Not like the actual year, of course, but uh, we were both born on September 6th. I, I looked him up for something else because I was trying to look up his signature for some reason. He has kind of a funky signature. And I was trying to figure out if that's supposed to be a J in the middle of his signature or what that is. And I saw he had the same birthday as me. I thought that was really cool. Love that guy. Love his G.I. Joe covers and stuff. Those are some awesome ones. Yeah, his Captain America, his G.I. Joe. I mean, his Punisher is like, I mean, those are like iconic covers to me. Yeah. Uh, let's get the audience involved here a little bit. Somebody does say, uh, David Clark here, four years of collecting. What's your favorite issue you own? Um, man, I mean, it's hard to nail that down in terms of like, I have different reasons for liking. I mean, honestly, one of my favorite issues ever is, uh, amazing Spider-Man 190 because that was the first comic book I ever bought. Oh, right on. Like, my grandpa used to take me into a store called Woolworths. I don't even know if that's even around anymore. I don't think it is. No. And uh, I walked by because I used to always buy those green army men when I was that age. I was like, my, both my grandfathers were uh, World War II veterans. So like I was, you know, huge, huge into the army guys. I walked by, you know, the uh, magazine shelf and I saw that cover of, you know, I didn't know the characters at the time. I mean, Spider-Man, I kind of knew who he was, but I see this werewolf, you know, like choking Spider-Man on top <laughs> of a bridge. And like, that was, that was the beginning of the end in terms of my, I mean, I just was, I, and I read, well, my grandfather probably read it to me at that age. Cause I was pretty young. I was probably, yeah. well, I don't, don't want to date myself that much but like that was the beginning so like i still have that book i mean it's beat to it's, it's beat <laughs> the heck. you know so like yeah that's probably one of my most prized books because i think of my grandfather reading it to me like over and he's like really you want to like we we've already read this why are we reading this again yeah no I, absolutely man that, that's awesome uh you, you never forget your first right <laughs> <laughs> exactly Hey, Fizbin, thanks a lot. Fizbin says, uh, thanks for introducing me to Turlock Comics. They have a bunch of my books right now and are going to get more. They communicate every step of the way, which is great. It's awesome. I definitely try and keep the customer in the loop as much as possible. Sending your books off to a stranger on Instagram, I'm sure is probably unnerving. So I like, I want people to feel comfort, you know, send a picture of their babies as often as possible kind of thing. Like, yeah. you know. Um, and I appreciate the trust, um, working on those books right now. Nice. Sounds like they're in good hands. Has been, uh, I know they are from personal experience. Uh, if you guys haven't watched, uh, the latest unboxing video I did for CGC, I was mentioning that earlier. I think it was about 20 books in total, kind of a combination of one big submission I did and a couple one-offs that we had. Got some amazing results back. I can tell that a lot of care went into the work that you guys did. 
um, you know, just all, every step of the way, just kind of the communication, like Fizben is saying, it's just been amazing. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm not going to like rag on a couple other cleaner impressors I use, but we definitely, you know, you know, a couple bad experiences I've had before we've talked about it. Um, and, and it's just, it's just refreshing to see somebody who genuinely cares about what they're doing. They care about the comics they're handling and that shows every step of the way. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, that, that's really, I mean, I said, I guess we'll run through the whole process and you know, that's kind of a tangent. Um, but like, that's really what I want is to people to feel comfortable sending a stranger their books. Cause like I said, I I've been in those, I've been in those shoes before, and sort of felt like I was rolling the dice and yeah. hoping for the best, you know, cause I, I think we talked about this in the DM, just, we touched on it. I said, I never really realized how, I guess I take it for granted my experience in the comic book world with cleaning, pressing, submitting, and how, how many people don't really know the process or are totally unsure of the process. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I'm not saying I, I just, I guess I took it for granted, my knowledge and my experience. And it, it still kind of like, not makes me laugh, but like I, I take a step back and like people, I get a lot of questions in my DMs about like, just, hey, how's this process work? Like, what do I do? What books do I give you? Like, how does this work? And yeah, it, it, it kind of takes me back once in a while because I'm thinking like, God, doesn't everybody know about this with the, you know, the interweb and you know, there's a billion comic book pressing videos. There's a billion CGC, EGS, CBCS, PG, PGX videos. So like, so that's like one of my biggest goals um, in this whole endeavor is to make people feel comfortable and, you know, try to help them out as much as I possibly can. And, you know, cause like I said, I know what it's like. I've sent off books and then been left in limbo. And yeah. I, I literally can't get an answer back. And it's, it's very unnerving to 100%. me. Like, you know, you send off whether they're dollar books or your prized grails. Like I, I, I look at every book, like it's my prized grail in our hands. And I treat every customer that way. Like how I'd want, I'd want to know, like, like, I mean, we'll run through the process real quick and that'll probably answer a lot of questions if we just sort of, cause that's the bulk of the questions I get is how's it all work? What do For I sure. do? You know? So I guess, I guess we could just hop into that and that yeah, probably absolutely, answer a man. lot of, if you don't mind your show, yeah, but hundred um, percent, I think that's a great place to start. And, and we can kind of filter through some of the questions that we've had that might kind of get answered up front that way too. Right. So, so basically, yeah, like we operate pretty much 99% on Instagram, not following me, you know, give me a follow. That'd be nice. But you hit me up, basically say, say, Hey, um, Hey Joey, you know, I want to get, I want to get 10 books pressed, you know, and get submitted. You know, how does this work? Basically that's what you do. You hit me up, say, Hey, I want to get some books cleaned and pressed and submitted I'll go over all the options with you. And we have a lot of different options. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not one of these companies that just say, Hey, give me some money. I'm going to clean press them. I'll submit them and you'll get them back when you get them back. That's not what I really want. Cause I've dealt with it. And I, I mean, me and you have dealt with it. You've been my Guinea pig of sorts. <laughs> um, you know, and thank you for that. Cause like I said, sure. it was a learning experience for me. I've used, I'd say six or seven other pressers at different times, some of the big ones on IG, some of the not so big ones on IG, good and bad results. Um, can't say I've walked away from too many of them. Totally a hundred percent satisfied. I've always, I, there always seems to be something lacking. Yeah. But anyways, to, you know, go back. So you hit me up. I'll, I'll discuss and answer any question you want. And I get all, I get the whole gamut of questions. Like, what books do I do? You know, is this dent possible to take out? Can we take out this stain? Should I go to C CBCS? Should I go to CGC? Should I do this? Should I do that? And 100%, I don't mind. All the, like, Hit me up. You know, I, I have no problem sitting there. I love talking about comics and, and helping people out because um, I've been there. I've been there when the first time I ever submitted and 
I think I submitted just books that made absolutely no sense whatsoever. I'll be honest. I, I just, I had no clue what to do. I was on the CGC website, like trying to figure out like, what do they mean by, you know, this and that. And, and uh, so modern economy, what? <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, I didn't know. And, 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 and pressing God, the first time I ever heard about pressing was probably in the nineties. I heard two guys like literally like pss, 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 whispering in the back room of a comp the back area of a comic book store. And when I walked back there, they literally like, you know, like <laughs> it, it was like this dark secret. And um, so, you know, I like, I like to, even though the internet has kind of really shed a ton of light on the whole process, there's still a lot of people who don't totally understand it and, you know, what's possible, what isn't possible. Right. And, you know, so I don't mind like, you know, you send me photos and say, Hey, how about this book? You think you could do something with this book or what about this? And what about that? What do you think of this? And that's fine. Like I I'll, I'll do it all day long with, you know, if, if you want to, if, you're working with us. I got no problem with that. You know, send me pictures, hit me up, DM me. We'll, we'll just email. If email's easier, I can do that. Um, God, getting off. See, I'm getting off track. I was trying to stay on. I'll stay, try to stay on track. Um, oh, good. Not get off on too much of a tangent. Um, so yeah, like we can clean and press. We could inspect your books to tell you, hey, this one might be worth it. This one might not be worth it. Um, and I could separate, I could send the CGS, I could send some to CBCS, I could send some back to you, I could send some to EGS. I mean, wh whatever combination thereof you want or what's required, obviously, like CBCS has certain services that other ones don't. And, you know, like I said, that's a whole nother video. <laughs> and which service to use, that's a whole nother video in itself. Right. But like, you know, I'll give you my honest estimation and, you know, um, it, it doesn't matter to me. I don't have a preference in terms of if you want CGC, cool. If you want CBCS, cool. I, I'm fine with either or neither, you know, whichever you want. You could submit under your account. Send me the paperwork. I'll pack them up. I'll send them off. That's fine. You know, we'll clean and press send them off onto your account. That's fine. Or we could do all the paperwork for you. Cause I understand sometimes it could be a little confusing and daunting for some people, or they just don't want to do it. You know, I, I get that too. Yeah. Convenience is nice. Um, and that's kind of where it all started for us is when I was selling books, I kind of just wanted to offer a convenient all in one, I guess, stop. Yeah. You know, buy a book, we'll clean and press it. We'll send it off. You get a, you know, you get a package in the mail one day, you know, open it up and boom, there's your grade. There's your slab. So it, it really kind of all started as to be just a convenience, if anything. And that's where me and you kind of really got going, tried a few other pressers. And that's when I, well, it's kind of odd. Me and James have been friends for a while and I never really knew how good he was because everybody presses nowadays. Like, yeah. You know, everybody I know has a press, has tried it, has tried cleaning. But so I personally used James and I was like, wow, you know, these were and I thought, well, maybe he's just hooking up my books because, you know, I'm a friend or this or that. And but um, say just give a little background on James. He's a retired uh, police officer. He was uh, injured in the line of duty in a high speed car chase in uh, in California and um, so he's paralyzed from the waist down. And uh, so when it happened, obviously, you got to kind of reevaluate things you do in life and uh, pick up new hobbies, I guess you could say. So cleaning and pressing became something he picked up. So he's been at it for over 10 years and he's experimented with every possible combination you could think of. He, uh, you know, he reads all the books. He's, he, you know, he's done it all. And he's very good. He's very thorough. He, he has that sort of patience that, you know, it requires. Um, so like I said, he does all that. I do light cleaning. I do light pressing on newer books and things like that. But uh, pretty much James is, you know, the guy who gets the results for us. 
Um, he does all my books, pers- you know, my personal books, whether it is for flipping or it's for, you know, my PC. Um, so, gosh, I'm trying to think of what else to cover. Um, so basically, just to kind of recap with, with where we're at so far to kind of help with that part. Essentially, and that, that's exactly where we started off is that kind of that all in one. Like I was like, well, hey, I bought this book from you. You said, you know, a cleaner impressor. Can we just take care of it? And instead of like you sending it to me, me sending it off to a clean impressor, them sending it back to me, me sending it to CGC or whatever. Let's just save some of that shipping, you know, risk, time, money. Let's have it kind of be that all in one service and send it off. Um, but I mean, on top of that, there's a lot of people that want their books clean and pressed that don't want to submit to CGC or CBCS. They just want to improve the appearance of their book or, you know, they, they don't like slabbing or whatever. And you guys can handle that. Uh, you guys can, you know, in some cases, you know, I don't want to say this is like one of your big services, but you can even help locate some books for, for people too. That's something you've kind of done before in the past. Um, and yep. something I know you guys are probably doing more of in the future. Um, so there's a lot of different things that are kind of under that umbrella right now. The main source of contact is their Instagram page. There is that, that link in the description below. If you want to go give Turlock comics a follow, uh, and then you can DM from there. Uh, also I'll, I'll end up pasting in the email address, um, that, that you prefer to use for that as well below. Cause there are some people that just aren't on Instagram right now, but also that physical store sounds like it will be coming too. So if you happen to be in California or, you know, maybe shipping addresses will kind of change based around that a little bit too. That'll be another route you can kind of go through. Um, so a lot of different kind of options there. I did kind of want to get to some of the questions people were asking about that stuff. For sure. Um, I think that kind of gives us an overlay of what the services are. And then maybe we can kind of, you know, kind of circle back if there's any. And kind just, of yeah, questions. just, just on one other thing um, for the people I'm kind of working with, with, I'm, Coming up with something a little bit new for people who don't, you just mentioned like people who don't want to submit, you know, maybe the book gets clean and pressed and it's not something they really want to submit or pay that money for. We're working on another option, um, basically doing a semi preservation. Um, i trying to think if I have it right here. Um, basically we clean and press your books and you decide, Hey, you know, it's not really something I want to drop a lot of money on or lose the book for a year because, you know, it might be just for your PC or, or whatever, you know, whatever the reasons are. Like I said, that's a whole nother video of why you grade books, you know, whether it is for flipping, speculation, preservation. We, we're going to uh, soon, because the supply chain is a little messed up right now, as everybody knows, um, offer an option, you know, put the... Um, sorry, geez. The, the the archival paper, we'll put it in the book, you know, behind the front cover, middle of the book, you know, uh, behind the rear cover. Uh, use like a 60-point clear p- plastic backing board in a 4 mil mylar, gently sealed on the back. So it'll display extremely nice. It'll be protected. Obviously not as much as, you know, encased, but right. it'll be, you know, much, much less money. And the turnaround time will literally be, you know, days, not years or months <laughs> or and years. I'm not I'm not even I'm not even not even exaggerating. I've had I have books that have been there for over. La- I have some last Ronins that are closing in on that year gap. Just like uh, Eddie's mullet dropped in the chat, just like his little comment down here. Four thousand days later, my CGC shipment arrived. <laughs> yeah. And see, like, yeah, like I said, that's another discussion in itself. But yeah, once they go, once they're, once they're off to the CGC gods, like people have to understand, like that's out of our hands. It's out of any presser's hands. And if you're sending off to CGC, like don't hold your breath. Like I would plan minimum three months on almost anything, even, even any sort of express CBCS express is pretty good. Yeah. CGC. Fast track. I don't know how. I I don't know. I I've I'm over. I'm almost three months on a fast track submission. Uh, so insane. like I said, that's a whole nother discussion though, <laughs> and I'm glad to discuss that. You know, you hit me up. I mean, heck, I'll even I'll even you DM me and you you want to you're looking to do some stuff. I'll give you my phone number and we will discuss whatever you want in whatever length you want. 
um, to help you make the best possible decision, given my experience, you know, and, and what we can do. For sure. Uh, and just uh, GK, GKA357 says, I'm on the verge of doing my first submission, but need a cleaner presser beforehand. I'm just going to throw this out there. Uh, I, I put my money where my mouth is. I've used Turlock Comics several times. Um, I've used other, just like Joey was mentioning, I've used other cleaner impressors and had some really good results, some really bad results from the same cleaner presser. So I don't know if I can trust them. So far, I mean, you can look back on my channel, those recent unboxings. I think they've delivered some great results and I would personally recommend giving them uh, a try. And I, I don't say that lightly. Like, I really believe that. Um, and then uh, kind of get through... Uh, we did have two brothers comics drop in the house. What's up, man? I really appreciate your men possibly. I don't know who's driving behind the, the two brothers comics account today, but I appreciate you guys stopping by. Um, so it sounds like some people are interested in that service. Uh, maybe a hard plastic top loader for the, for the archival is a suggestion we got. Um, <laughs> Jordan says, thanks for the great work. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, Michael needs a cleaner too. I need a guy to clean and ship to great. Michael Hinton is a, uh, another seller on Instagram. He's Hoodwood comics on, uh, on Instagram. He's kind of uh, been doing a great job over the last year, kind of starting up as a, as a seller, uh, somebody to go check out. And yeah, I, I would, then I would totally recommend Turlock comics as somebody to, you know, at least start that dialogue with, like he said, he's very open. Some of these people, you talk to him and you wait days before you even hear back from him the first time about, you know, Hey, can I, are you taking books right now? Um, and you're going to get some quick responses from Turlock, which I love. No, and um, I, I really try. Like, I mean, honestly, you could DM me anytime. Like if I'm sleeping, I'm sleeping. It ain't going to wake me up. You know, if I'm driving, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll get to you when I'm, you know, safe to text uh, DM back. So like I said, I, I really, truly, I know everybody says that, but I truly don't mind the dialogue, you know, right. um, whatever you want to discuss about it is, is fine. You know, um, I, I was to say, that's what I spend the majority of my time doing is, you know, talking over different options and, you know, what, what you should or shouldn't do. And like I said, they probably, we could probably do like four more videos on each part of, um, that whole, that whole thing, you know, but for sure. Like I said, I'm, I'm here to will. like really, truly try to make you comfortable with the entire process and with giving a stranger, I mean, cause you know, I am a stranger, you know, and it is scary to send off, you know, thousands of dollars of books, you know, to somebody. Yeah. And, you know, like I said, and, and I've been left in limbo many, many times with, with books. And I, I can't stand it when I message somebody and I don't get an answer for, you know, 10 days later. Right, exactly. Uh, and I think, you know, that's something I talk about a lot on this channel. Transparency is such a big deal in comic books. And unfortunately, kind of the lack of transparency is what we see with a lot of different places when it comes to, you know, even CGC, CBCS, all that kind of stuff. Uh, the publishers, sometimes even creators. And getting that transparency from some of the comic book industry is super refreshing. So I do appreciate that. Um, speaking of transparency, let's get... So I made a post a few days ago. And I said, hey, what, what are your, your cleaning and pressing questions for Turlock Comics? Uh, so I sent ahead most of those questions that we got ahead of time to Joey. Because uh, if you guys didn't catch that, you know, Joey is not the primary, like, cleaner impressor over there. That's James, uh, who does, you know, the, the fantastic, amazing work. Um, I know, Joey, you help out a little bit with that. But, uh, but I'm sure some of these questions probably got run by James, I assume. Um, and uh, Or you know the answer already because, you know, you talk about it all the time. Um, some great questions I got. The first one I want to tackle from that post, and then we'll kind of get to some of the questions we're getting in the chat as well. Uh, what does cleaning entail? I use a cotton ball and an eraser to remove obvious blemishes like grime and fingerprints. That comes from Great Northwest. Do uh, you have an answer for that one, Joey? Yeah, like before I answer any questions about cleaning and pressing, I mean, there is a big caveat to this. Like, and I know no one's going to want to hear this, but there's always and if, ors, or buts, and maybes, and a huge gray. I mean, I know no one wants to hear that, but like, you know, like say someone asks about color rub, you know, it's going to depend. I mean, um, some color rub can come off, some can't. Cleaning, everybody does it a little bit differently. I mean, I see guys who use red erasers. I personally, we don't touch, we don't put red erasers on anything. Um, 
like we, I mean, like, okay, if you want to know how we do most of our hand cleaning, uh, cotton balls, uh, scentless Swiffers, and uh, what's it called? Uh, um, like absorbing, um, we'll use that. It, it just really depends on what we're doing. And like I said, a lot of the questions when it comes to cleaning and or pressing, it depends. You know, there's, and I know no one wants to hear that they want hard, fast answers. And I get it. It's frustrating when somebody's like, well, it depends. But, you know, and a lot of things we can't, I can't 100% answer unless I have the book in my hand. I do my best when you send me photos and I say, hey, yes, that's definitely possible. We definitely can improve it, but I can't 100% because a picture can be very deceiving depending on the angle, the lighting. I mean, you know how it is when you're buying comic books. You you buy one, it looks it looks beautiful. Then you get it home, you're like, what is this even the same book? <laughs> you know. So, like I said, I know it's a frustrating answer, but like, and cleaning it just depends. It depends on the age of the book. Depends on how brittle, you know, the paper is. It depends on what we're cleaning. If it's you know some fingerprints, if it's grease, oil, a water stain. Um, and then, like I said, it depends on if it's a raised cover, a hologram cover, a, a foil cover, new Marvel, old Marvel, new, you know, what I mean, like there's so many factors. But like I said, mainly we just use cotton balls, honestly, and uh, odorless, uh, scentless uh, Swiffers we use quite a bit, too. And there's a few hand tools and a few other tricks that we, you know, we, we, we employ proprietary uh proprietary like yeah i mean you know james definitely has his secrets you know and um but that's that's the bulk of it i think that like the one thing i'd point out is i think a lot of people when they think about cleaning just just know you know and, and again you can watch my examples that i posted just know that it's gonna get cleaned thoroughly like it's not gonna get pencil whipped right like that's what i see from some cleaners and pressers is yeah, they clean and pressed it. And it seems like they just did the equivalent of like what CGC used to call a quick press where they just ran it through a press. Here you go. Like, and, did, did you actually clean it? You know, I don't know. <laughs> and I, and honestly, I think that's the biggest problem with cleaners and pressers. I, I think they start pressing books and they do a thorough job at first but then more and more books roll in, you get overwhelmed. And like, I mean, like the Thor 337, I don't think they maliciously just said, oh, we're not going to press this. I think they just get too busy. And, you know, you get those dollars rolling in. You're like, oh, you know, if I do, a, you know, if I do 200 books this month, you know, that's, you know, X amount of dollars, however much you know, they charge or, you know, whoever charges. And yeah. I think that's a problem. And we, you know, that's me and James. We're like, we're not going to get into that. If we can't, we can't accept books. We can't accept books. We'll just tell people, Hey, we're not going to accept books till after this time. Cause we want to keep our turnaround time roughly 15 days ish. Like I said, it depends on the size of the submission too. You send us five books versus 50 books. That's obviously going to change the turnaround time quite drastically. And it depends on the book too. See, right. that's the thing when pressers say, like I said, this is getting off on a whole nother tangent, but like, you know, when pressers say, Oh yeah, give us 40 books and we'll have it back to you in two weeks. Well, I mean, I don't know how you make those kind of promises when you don't even know the level of, of, of care they're going to need. Like we pull out books after they're done in our process, whatever part of the process that may be, whether it's in the humidity chamber, in the press, the hand cleaning, the hand, you know, uh, the hand pressing, I guess you can call it. We'll use small tools to, to work out some of the defects. We get done, we look it over. And if it's not right, it goes back in. Like yeah. it, it, we redo it until it, it's to the point of either we're going to risk damage because you can damage a book cleaning and pressing just, you know, some people don't totally understand you're applying light chemicals in some instances, um, depending on who, you know, how they're doing it. You're applying pressure, you're applying heat, you're applying humidity to paper. There is a risk of damage. 
So we're going to clean a book and press a book until it's right. Or we feel that we could possibly do damage from doing too much. Cause like I said, depending on the book, a newer book, yes, can withstand a lot more damage than say a golden age book. That's brittle. It's right. You know, so I think that's the biggest problem with cleaners and pressers. They just get a bit overwhelmed. And instead of just telling the customer, Hey man, I'm going to be a few more days. And they just sort of pencil whip it and not saying that happened with the Thor 337. I don't know why that book just irks me a little bit, but um, <laughs> especially for the price that it was yeah. to get cleaned and pressed. But, you know, I, I think that's the biggest problem and we're going to avoid that. So when you hit me up, I'll tell you right up front, like, Hey, I can't take any books. Or if I do, your books are going to sit there for a little while. Like I'm, I'm not going to do that. I, and also I'm not just going to keep your books and go silent. If they're going to run over a certain amount of time, I will contact you and I will make it right. I, I, you know, I really strive to be that way too, is make things right when, you know, no matter whose fault it is, I want the customer to walk away happy. Yeah. Um, whether it's a sale, you know, the pressing, the submission, the turnaround time and so forth. Right, exactly. And uh, that, you know, something you brought up, I wanted to go back to this question I saw in the chat. And I think this is a great question. Otaku Tour Guide asks, what is the process? Should books get damaged? Sorry if you covered this topic already. I, we didn't cover that yet. So what, you know, what kind of uh, process do you have in place if some kind of a damage occurs, either maybe from shipping or maybe from the process of cleaning and pressing itself? Well, shipping, I mean, it's going to be insured. You know, I don't ship your, your books that are getting cleaned and pressed. You know, they're, they're going to ship priority, so they have a minimal amount of transit time and they are going to have insurance on them. Um, when CGC or CBCS ships them, they that works. the You know, it's part of the price is the insurance. Right. Um, but I mean, people have to understand. And this is I've never heard of a cleaner oppressor say otherwise. There is always a risk of damage. But that's also why you need to go with the reputable person handling your books. You don't want a novice going off what he read on the internet or if he just picked up a new book on Amazon and says, hey, you know, I'm going to go buy this press and I'm going to do this. It, that's what separates a decent presser from the really good ones. They know how to mitigate that risk. But like I said, you, you do have to understand there is always a risk when you're exposing paper to – you know, to heat and pressure, humidity. And I mean, you know, um, so, I mean, it's kind of a risk you're going to assume with any presser unless they're just going to cold press it. But even then I've seen CGC cold press things into oblivion. Yeah. hundred uh, percent. Recent question we just got from GT key comic. Do you accept submissions from Canada? We accept some anywhere you want to send them from. Yeah. I mean, I mean, obviously, like I said, you're going to pay if I ship them back to you, you're obviously going to pay more on the shipping. Um, and if they're going to come back from CG's uh, grading company, you pay more for shipping. But yeah, I, I we accept from anywhere you send them. We will we'll, we will take care of them. Cool. Yeah, that's something, too, that, I, I you know, it's, it's not really a question we got, but it is kind of a uh, like an FAQ, like a frequently asked question. Um, Something to keep in mind is when we we talk about pricing and stuff like that, keep in mind it's not covering, you know, we don't talk about the shipping because that's going to vary, right? And we don't talk about um, the submission fees, like for grading companies, because again, that'll vary depending on what you're submitting and to which company, those those prices are all going to change. So, you know, if you're having that that front upfront conversation, I'd recommend, you know, including that in, in you know, hey, what's this going to run if we do these books for these, you know, different services, right? And that'll come up in the process. But I think people hear that price and sometimes they're like, oh, cool, I can get a book graded. Like, well, no, that's actually cheaper than even the grading costs are, period. So something to keep in mind. Yeah, um, and then also with the cleaning and pressing, we, we do offer other services and we don't really have a hard, fast price because the time can vary so much. Like we have advanced stain removal. Some people like... You, um, and I can't guarantee the time frame for said stain because I don't know how deep the stain is. I don't know what the stain is and I don't know how many treatments it will take. 
I right. mean, generally that's where that's kind of just kept to higher end, book, you know, expensive books, you know, pricey books. Most people aren't going to do it on a hundred dollar book. And we also do page whitening. Like to give you an idea, page whitening, you're going to use blue light. You're going to lay the book out. And every time you lay it out, you probably have two to three hours. So two to three hours, take it out, turn the page, two to three hours, turn the page. Two. Granted, like that's not full labor, but it does take time because you have to set timers, goes off. You have to go take it out because overexposure can damage the book. So like things like that, it's hard to put a, a solid price on like, okay, it's, you know, $30 to whiten all the pages. Like, cause it, it really depends, you know, some books can tolerate it longer and you can get better results. But like I said, those are options right. for usually, you know, more pricey books that you're really looking to maximize um, for the grading process. For sure. Uh, Pete wanted to know location. I'm assuming you mean location for Turlock Comics. That is in uh, Turlock, California. And, uh, you know, fingers crossed, hopefully very soon to be a brick and mortar location as well. Uh, getting that process going. Um, so let's go back to another question that we had from the, uh, the post I made the other day. Uh, Headless Hammerhead wanted to know, using an eraser to clean a white cover can remove the gloss. Would this affect the value of a comic? Oh, yes. I mean, that, that's why I, I said, like, we don't touch red erasers. I mean, you can use it in certain instances. But, oh, yeah, you definitely, if you rub too hard with anything, the Swiffer, the absorbing, anything, like, we've probably all done it. You know, you're in the shower or something like that, and you clean a spot off, and then you have a clean spot and the rest of the shower is dirty. And you're like, oh, you know, <laughs> oh, dang. You know, now the wife's going to make me clean the whole thing. <clears throat> Same sort of concept. Yeah, you rub on a spot, you get a clean spot, yes, but you also took the gloss off and it will stand out and it does affect the grade. As to how much it affects the grade, that's, I mean, depends on the mood of CGC or CBCS because, you know, but yes, you definitely don't, you, you got to be very liberal with an eraser, how much pressure you're using, which way you're, you know, uh, doing the stroke. Yeah. How you're holding the page. Um, you know, like I said, there is some artistry to the whole thing. And, sure. you know, that's definitely, we've talked about that before too, that at some level it kind of becomes an art form of sorts, not just, Hey, I'm going to read this guideline off of the latest YouTube video and try it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where like experience comes in to a huge extent too. I imagine like, like with any kind of hands-on skill, any kind of craft, like you learn from experience, like, Hey, you know what I've noticed on this kind of cover. If I, if I kind of keep this stroke going the same way every time it's better versus, you know, a different method or whatever it might be. Uh, I'm pretending like I know anything about it, but I can just see that happening and being the case. Um, oh, this is a good question. Um, Daniel Shaw wanted to know, is there a way to clean rust off staples before it's made its way to the pages? You, you can clean rust off staples, but if you make them squeaky clean, you'll actually get dinged for it. Because it'll count as restoration? Yeah, they you because we've had customers ask like, hey, you know, I want these staple. And we're like, you know, we give the warning like, hey, you know, if they are squeaky clean you're going to get dinged for it. CGC will ding you. CBCS will ding you for it to a point, but you know, you can almost the same way as you clean a cover. Um, you obviously don't want to use chemicals that, you know, like rust remover type stuff. I've had people do that. It will damage the paper, especially around where the staples are in, you know, cause the staples are at the spine. The, the color on the spine is super easy to damage. Yeah. Um, but I mean, yeah, you can limit rust to a point, but if if you if you make the staples super clean, you're going to get dinged on it. For sure. Uh, Jordan, I'm not 100% sure I understand this question. I might need you to reword that, or maybe maybe Joey knows what you're talking about. No, now that right. Turlock is on, I need another 12 submitted. Are Oh, are you accepting books right now? Is that your question? I'm sorry. I read that. And I didn't <clears throat> kind of make sense. Are you accepting books right now? Yes, we're accepting books right now. We have a slightly longer turnaround time because of um, some cons and some signings, but we're still under 20 days. 
uh, for that mm-hmm. amount of books for 12 days. We're still under, we're still, we'll just say three weeks, 21 days. Um, we're still under that. So yes, we are still accepting. Um, right now we can't do a 15 day turnaround time on 12 books, but like I said, if you're willing to wait the extra week, cause like James, he's going down to WonderCon in Anaheim to go. So he'll be down there for like three days getting signatures. Nice. Sounds like a good time. Uh, Zach Lecker wanted to know, uh, what's your opinion on people using chemical and removing stains and et cetera? Only ask because there's a presser cleaner on YouTube that has a whole procedure of it and is getting some backlash. I mean, I don't know which specific one. Like yeah. a lot of people are using what's called the hot method right now. Um, you technically use some chemicals. Most, I mean, honestly, most cleaners, pressers use some type of chemical. Um, I mean, so he's not doing anything that most guys don't do when it comes to stain removal. Yeah. I mean, you can only do so much with humidity and everything else, getting rid of certain stains. Um, like I said, I don't, I don't, you know, um, we use certain chemicals for stain for advanced stain removal. It won't come back as restoration because it's not that drastic. Cause we, we don't want to risk, you know, taking off any of the original color or ink or anything else or damage. Right. But on, honestly, whether the presser admits it or not, most of them use some type of chemical for stain removal, especially now, like I said, I, there's a book that just came out. It describes, like I said, what's called the hop method. It, it requires a bit of a spray. You spray the boards that are going to get pressed onto the book and every time you do it it sort of lifts a layer of said stain okay put it in simple like it's a little more detailed but that's the gist of it right um i i don't know this specific person you're talking about so i I don't want to comment on him specifically but most pressers use some chemicals for stain removal it's it's the way it is. I mean, yeah. I, I, I don't know. You know, it's maybe it's a dark secret. One's supposed to say nothing, but you know. <laughs> uh, and I think like too, like there's probably, I think the word chemical can be a little. little well, that's little, what I'm saying. Cause technically like rubbing alcohol is a chemical. Right. I think technically water is a chemical. Like it's, I mean, it's, I mean, it's just one of those things where. I mean, uh, uh, um, like I said, a lot of the stuff that people use to wipe, you know, they either put it on the cotton or the absorbing. Those are chemicals, technically. Yeah. I mean, yes, you definitely, there's a certain line you go past. And I mean, but every presser I've ever talked to or met that uses some type of chemical for stain removal. I've, whether they admit it or not, I don't know. We do it for advanced stain removal because it's the only way to really lift the stains. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, this is a really common question. I'm sure you've heard this a lot. Jordan wanted to know: Can signed books be pressed? Does it affect the signature? Oh yes, they they hundred percent can be pressed. But obviously, the humidity chamber you can't. I mean, we don't put signatures. We don't apply humidity or said chemicals. Um, and you just you, the the heat and the press time just has to be adjusted. Yeah. So it just depends. Like, I mean, honestly, we've, I pressed the book, not I, James pressed the book the other day and it was signed with pencil of really odd. Um, it was, it was, I can't remember what writer it was. It was a female writer. I'm forget. I'm brain farting. So like I said, that's a little bit different than somebody who signed in Sharpie versus someone who signed in pen but yeah, you can press it. Like we just did an ultimate fallout four for bronze age and it had three signatures on it and it can't, you know, it came back. Okay. But like I said, yeah. we don't apply humidity, any sort of moisture to it. Cause that, that can mess up the, uh, the signatures. Okay, cool. Uh, this is a good question too. Something I've actually kind of wondered about, uh, basically, uh, an ASM 210 with some yellowing on the cover. Can anything be done to help yellowing? Yes. It, yeah. 
there's things we can do. I'm not saying it can be 100% removed, but a lot of times we can improve on it or fade the fade the yellowing, I guess you can say. Um, similar to page whitening. Cool. You know, it is it is it's that's a service of above and beyond the standard clean and press. So, you know, if you're interested in something like that, just hit me up and we could discuss it more in detail and for sure. Uh, so GT has an interesting question here. I think we've kind of talked about something a little bit of this kind of offline before. Uh, so I want to see what you think about this question. Uh, do you offer what he calls a suggestion service? Example, I send you 25 books and you inform me that, inform me that only 15 to 20 of these books would benefit from a press and you suggest the rest be submitted no press. Is that kind of a, a service that you'd consider doing? Yeah, we. I literally just did this with... Uh... Somebody you referred over to me, I don't want to mention a name because I don't know if he wants to be mentioned, but you know, he said, Hey, I'm going to, he sent me 12 to 15 books and he's like, I want to know which ones you think would really benefit. If not, we charge a very, not usually I charge $7 for, you know, a batch of books to go through. Cause like I said, and when a lot of people are like, Oh my God, you charge just to look at books. But when I'm looking at books, so I get your books, I open them up. I page count them. I make sure there's no tears, no ads missing. The pinups are there. Staples are there. Covers are attached. So it's kind of a timely, it takes longer than one would think. Like grab 20 books you're not familiar with and just open them up and figure out the page count. And, you know, if they're missing any ads, it does take time. So yes, I, I do that. I have no problem. You know, I'll send the ones off that need to be cleaned and pressed. Um, I'll send back the ones that, you know, aren't going to benefit at all. If you want some going to grading, some not that whatever combination, like I said, we're, we're here to make this as easy as possible for you. We do the work, the paperwork, honestly, you know, you write the check, we take care of everything else and books go wherever you need them to go. Like for that's sure. kind of like, like we talked about in the beginning, you know, kind of just an all in one service absolutely and uh pete uh you were wondering about small orders like two or four um uh, not sure exactly what you mean but I, I guess probably i'm assuming does that affect turnaround time maybe that's the question they're asking um oh yeah i mean yeah if you only submit two books i mean i definitely we definitely can work those in and get those turned around much faster the bulk of our orders are usually 10 to 25 books that's yeah seems to be so yeah when i say like a turnaround time it's generally for like at least 10 books but yeah like if like 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 i said right now we're coming up on con season and a ton of signatures uh you know from cgc so yeah like i i just did some for the shatner signing a lot of star trek books came in just one or two and yeah a lot of times i could turn those around pretty quick usually three to five days at most. Um, yeah. Like I said, it depends too. Like, you know, like I said, I hate using that word, but you send me some golden age book that's going to require a ton of care. Yes. Like I can't guarantee versus some book that's a year old. I mean, right. Those are two different worlds. So, but, and most of the submissions are modern copper age, you know, that's, I would say the bulk of the submission. So yeah, we, we accept one book. We accept 50 books. It's, you know, whatever you need for sure. And it, yeah, definitely. I can do like two books pretty quick. We could turn those around pretty fast. No problem. Um, this is, uh, this is from our post the other day. Uh, fear monarch asked how well does it work on foil covers? If at all, I have a couple Catwoman books. I'm tempted to get pressed. That's probably a, a common question. Like kind of lump in like the embossed, the foil, the card stock, People have these different kind of questions about cover types. Uh, you know, is there something you have to walk out, watch out for with these, or uh, can you kind of walk us through that a little bit? Yeah, you de you definitely got to go about those completely different. Like for a lot of the foil covers, like okay, like for like Venom number one, I believe is the a popular the protector you know, one. cover. Like you're not going to really apply the humidity and the pressure that you would. A lot of times you buff those literally almost like you would buff your car 
And okay. we have a couple hand tools that we use depending. But like I said, it also depends on where the defect is, how deep the blemish is. Uh, but generally, no, you don't press them. You buff them. Is Like I said, but it, it depends on the blemish and depends yeah. on the, you know, every, everything is, you know, there's a huge gray area. So it's hard to give you a definite answer. Like, yes, you can or can't do something to this type of book because it depends. Uh, Mark has a quick follow-up to that. How about treasury sized books? Can they be clean and pressed? Yep. Magazine size, treasury size. We've done them because like I said, I'm a huge Savage Sword of Conan fan and I have the huge treasuries like the Hulk versus Batman and yeah, things like yeah. that. And we've done them. We, you know, so, I mean, they're, they're pretty much all the same. You adjust the amount of heat and the amount of time in the press, depending on, you know, how heavy or light the paper is or the cover is like it, all books are like that. You just adjust according to the era, the paper type, quality, you know, things like that. For sure. Um, let me try to kind of parse this question here. So Manny asked, can you have a pressed book that gets a high grade, but then looks ugly in the slab when defects return? Okay, so this is a question about you know, there's some some processes, some processes, I guess is how you'd say that, that are not necessarily permanent. Um, let's kind of approach this question like that. So so can you kind of talk us, you know, a little bit through that process as far as like, you know, I know like cold pressing, for example, there's some stuff with that too. Maybe kind of mention that. Uh, what, what kind of what kind of can people expect there? Generally, yeah, like you just said, a cold press defects can return almost more than likely they will, but it also depends on the era of the book. Like, cause like, you know, it's going to go back to this. It depends. Yeah. But generally if you're applying, like if they go into a humidity chamber and then go to, go, go to the press, generally we don't see defects return. I, I haven't seen it from a book that's gone in the humidity chamber, then to a press. I haven't seen a defect return. Gotcha. Uh, in, in the years I've been doing it. And with James, I asked, I asked him this specific question. He said the same thing. He says, I've never seen it return. Um, but cold pressing, like, was it CCS from, you know, C, uh, CGC? Yeah. Cold pressing can, like, I don't recommend only time I would ever recommend, I guess this, you know, using the pressing services through CGC is if, you have a new modern book that is literally a 9.8 and you're just trying to sort of seal the deal. Like then I would yeah. say, yeah, go ahead. Fine. You know, um, cause less, cause I get it. Like less places, the book's gotta be sent the better, you know, but, um, well, yeah, like real I, said, fast. I haven't personally seen it. I'm not saying it's never happened. I'm sure yeah. another presser would probably tell you have a different opinion. I've never seen it come back after it's been in the humidity chamber, then pressed. I haven't seen a set, you know, set defect come back. Yeah. And, and to kind of address that last point too, because uh, there was a question about this earlier. And to me, it was a little out of scope, but since it just came up, the the whole CGC, CBCS in, in-house services we were talking about for cleaning and pressing. Now, I, I haven't used CBCS, but I've personally used CGC. Uh, I did their, their quick press. I did a quick press submission. And for me, the, the biggest problem there, it's not necessarily that they did bad work or anything like that. The biggest problem was it just added an enormous amount of time to that submission because what people may not realize, I, I'm not 100% sure if it works exactly the same as CBCS, but I think it does. With CGC, you kind of have to go through that CCS facility, go through their backlog, have everything wait, and then it goes to CGC and I think it kind of gets moved a little bit further ahead than like a brand new thing they just opened, you know, that day, but not by much, it seems like. So you're you're talking about an already long turnaround time and you're kind of adding extra time to that. That's the biggest reason I'd recommend avoiding those services. Uh, I don't think they deliver the best results, but I don't think they're terrible either personally. Um, but I just, I don't want to add all that extra time. And I want to know that, you know, the, the correct level of care is going to be put on each book too, of course, but I think, you know, people already complain about the turnaround times. You're just adding to that. Yeah. I mean, I definitely, I mean, me personally, no, I would never use it. Never. I yeah. mean, 
I mean, and not just for the obvious reason that that we clean and press. I'm <laughs> saying even if I had no affiliation with the cleaner presser or handled any of this, I would never do it. I don't think they do a good job. <sighs> Like I said, they're going to get it, take it out of plastic, slap it in there, bam, done, out. And, yeah, it's going to add weeks to your turnaround time, and it's not going to be a good job. It's not. There's not going to be that true care. Like, yeah. I mean, honestly, they don't care. They, they don't care about your books. And, you know, I, I, me personally, I would never suggest it ever. But Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. I mean, even if it's for slightly different reasons, I just – I don't think, like, there's much value add there, right? Like – you, for what you're going to pay doing that and the extra time, man, just go with, go with a, a cleaner and pressure you trust. Um, and then especially since like, you know, Turlock, for example, they'll handle the submission side of things too. Even if you want to use your account, uh, which maybe is kind of a, a drawback for some people or something like that is, is uh, you know, Oh, well I got to use somebody else's account. No, you can still use your own account. Just send the yeah. paperwork along and or, there you go. Right. Um, cool. Um, so this is a good question. We've kind of already touched on a little bit of this, but um, you know, people are kind of wondering about the guru himself, James. Um, there people are wondering, you know, where did he learn all the techniques? Is it through experience or industry guidelines or training? And you've answered a little bit about, but you want to kind of maybe give a little bit more of his background for people. Yeah. Like I said, I, I think, um, well, not think I've, I've talked with him about it. And uh, when he first, you know, he's wheelchair bound. You know, like I say, he's paralyzed from the waist down. So, you know, like he had to adjust in life. And so he started really getting into it. And, you know, at first it was, yeah, order a press, watch some videos, read some forums. And I believe, I, I don't know the guy's name. He actually wrote the book that just came out. Um, there's a book going around on Amazon and a lot of guys have it about, you know, cleaning and pressing and light boxes and this and that. James was like sort of a Patreon member of sorts of this, this guy, this guru. And so he was following him and just experiment after experiment after experiment. And we still do. He still like, will hit me up, say, hey, Joey, do you got any books with like some crazy water stain on it? And I'll be like, yeah, sure. You know, I'll, I'll <laughs> dig through, or I even, you know, I'll even head to like a garage sale. I'll find some ratty old books and say, here, see what you could do with this. Nice. Like, yeah, it's a little secret. I, I think I, I don't know. I talked to somebody, you know, I'll throw like a super ratty book into the mix of someone else's order just to fuck, uh, mess with James a little bit. <laughs> it's, it's all good, man. You can say it. You can say it. Um, um, you know, it'll be like great. a total just destroyed book. And he's like, you know, just to, you know, mess with them and see. But yeah, he experiments constantly because like I said, I mean, that's experience will be the best teacher in this. Like if you're looking to clean and press on, on your own, and I don't blame you. Like I said, if you're in the in the hobby, like it's definitely something worth picking up. Yeah. Because it saves a ton of time and money. And you know, you can put as much care as you want into your own books. A lot of it, yeah. Just yeah, go find a garage sale or a you know, a bundle of books for cheap. And I mean, honestly, yeah, watch some videos, get a book, and and you start. I mean, that's yeah. that's the best way to get started. And that's it's exactly pretty much how he started. He and like I said, it's to this day experiments he's he's literally like right now he's working on a golden age wonder woman who some kid drew red you know uh pen all over wonder woman and he's slowly lifting layer after layer of this red pen so he pulls nice. off the board and there's an outline of wonder woman in red pen and it's slowly coming off so that's what i'm saying it, it it's kind of a never-ending process especially when you start you know trying to really learn advanced techniques for sure that's awesome um, Sikotron, I, I kind of read through your question. Um, it, it's mostly kind of comes down to CGC versus CBCS. I'm probably going to do a video at some point on that. Cause I know it's, just, it's a topic that even though I feel like everybody's covered it to death, I know a lot of people still have that question. So I'll probably cover that in a separate video. Um, I think that if you, I'll just give you my personal take real fast on it, just to kind of give you an answer though. I think a lot of people kind of underestimate CBCS value a little more than they probably should. Uh, Cause when a book's hot, I don't know, man, people still go after the book, even if it's CBCS. Um, but if it's also for your personal collection, I think the difference is a lot more vague. And I, I think you're that kind of collector from a, when I've talked to you in the past. So I would say maybe, maybe kind of go with um, whatever service you prefer, whatever slab you prefer. 
because both grading companies are, I think, kind of in the ballpark accurate with their grading. Both slabs, I think, do a decent job of protecting the comic book. You just kind of get into like this, well, I prefer CGC. I prefer CBCS. And that affects your buyers a little bit if you are selling. So that's something to consider. But it's a whole ball of wax, and we'll get into it in another video. Um, and, and, you know, I'm, I'm sure if you want to hit up Joey about any questions about, you know, hey, I got this book. What do you think, CGC or CBS? I'm sure he could give you his opinion, too. Um, but it is kind of just an opinion, unfortunately. Like, it, it's it's like the Coke-Pepsi argument of the comic book world right now. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I mean, definitely, for sure. Like I said, that's a whole other video. And, I mean, me personally, I go to CBCS. That's me. I, I like their grading standards a little bit better. To me, they're more predictable. Yeah. CGC, I've... But, I mean, like, just touch real quick on CGC tends to get more money. I mean, it it's a sad fact. Yeah. Well, maybe not sad, but it right now it is, and, and a lot of people prefer how the cases look, especially with the custom label. Right. But I don't really think it's going to drastically hurt the value. No, I think I think somebody I can't remember who it was. It might have been, might have been Journos. I can't remember who did it. Uh, they did like a really cool price analysis, and it was a, it's a little bit older video, but you know I think on average it was something like five percent less for CBCS. But you also got to consider now CBCS is cheaper right now too for for grading. So it's something you kind of got to factor in a little bit too. Um, there's a lot to that, and, and we'll touch on it in another video. Um, <laughs> This is a good question from Zaw Collector. Can anything be done if there's mold on a book or is it already gone? Um, here we go back with the depends word. I mean, are you talking yeah. like, is it edges? Is it like coated? I mean, like I, I need a little more context on it. You can fix some mold. A lot of times though, it does take some chemicals, which won't put it in the restoration, but like I said, it depends. Like, I, I don't know how much mold are you talking? Like a couple corners, the whole like interior, the, like, you know, there, there's, but yeah, I mean, you, you can fix some things, um, whether it's worth it or not. Right. That's the thing people, I think people kind of forget about when it comes to grading standards is it's not like one issue is in a vacuum every single time. It's, it's taken in context with all the other flaws on the book. If you have enough other flaws on the book that are unfixable by a clean and press, it might not make going after that one issue any more important or not. I mean, it, just, it depends on the book. Like, you know, we say it depends, but you know, every comic book in, to some extent is unique, uh, especially when you get to older comic books. You, know, you got different types of paper, different types of color, different printing process for every you know for everything as well. So, it, it is definitely something that you know that that depends part is important. Um, and I think that's a good thing you keep saying that because I think there's a lot of cleaner impressors out there that are just like, yeah, any book doesn't matter. We'll do it, whatever. And they don't necessarily dive into, Hey, on this book, by the way, it's going to be like this, you know, I think that's an important piece. Um, okay. Let's see. Kind of, Oh, we got another super chat. Want to acknowledge that real quick. Rick James bitch comes in with a $5 super chat. All right, Rick, we will do the uh, the drawing for the books at the end of the show. Um, I'm going to show those again real fast just because I didn't show them since the beginning of the show. I uh, did kind of a, like a weird little assortment for the Super Chat Prize this week. Got a Joe Casada Spider-Man print. But that's kind of cool. Uh, don't see that very often, so I'll throw a print in there. Uh, got a Marvel book. I got Deadpool Kills the Marvel Universe trade paperback. Throw that in there as well. Uh, unread copy. For my cheesecake cover fans, got some Purgatory. That's uh, a Midtown exclusive. Kind of get the light off that there, but kind of a cool, kind of a cool cover. And then a couple DC books. We'll do another. People, a lot of Supergirl fans, watch the show. That's the Future State Superwoman book, Kara Zor-El number one. And we'll get a key in there too. How about First Ghost Maker? So that's your super chat prize tonight. Uh, if you want a super chat, does help out the channel, supports the show, and get a chance to win some cool stuff too. So. Uh, there we go. Uh, so appreciate the super chats. Um, let's see. So uh, going to have to jump off kind of soon. I am doing a whatnot auction at eight o'clock uh, Pacific time here. So I do want to need to jump off kind of soon, but I did want to talk about um, uh, something we talked about before, which is kind of speaking to that, 
supply and demand piece a little bit. Is there any kind of pricing update coming anytime soon that we should expect? Yeah. I mean, you know, unfortunately, you know, supplies, supplies have, you know, gone up. Um, so yeah, we have, we have to raise prices a bit. Um, and also just to keep up with everything and buy new presses. We're currently retrofitting James's garage into a full pressing, you know, tons of presses, Absolutely. tons of humidity chambers, ton tons of blue light chambers. Um, so yeah, we, we have to raise prices. So we're going up to um, $18 per book, any book, and then $15 a book for 10 or more. Okay. And, um, and that, is that using the discount code? Yes, that's that. Yes. Yeah. That's using yeah. the discount code. So if you guys um, if you don't know, uh, you know, we, we kind of work this out to where those are some special prices. If you kind of go tell other people about this, make sure they watch one of my videos, uh, to get the discount code that you can use when you're talking to, to Joey. Uh, cause normally it's a little bit more expensive. This is a special offer for you guys being, you know, wonderful viewers and checking out and following along in this crazy journey as we've submitted these books and clean and pressed them. Um, kind of a cool reward for you guys for doing that. So, um, yeah, totally. I, I understand a hundred percent. Like, you know, for one thing, if you keep the prices so cheap, you guys get flooded with books. Well, that's just going to mess your turnaround times up too. Uh, I mean, and honestly, too. yeah, I mean, that that's part of it too. Like I said, total transparency. Yeah. You know, you, you put out a product cheap, you know, and it's, you know, what we consider a quality product. Yeah. You get, we're going to get flooded. Uh, but, but a lot of it is the price of boards and the paper is getting expensive. Right. I mean, it, it, um, if you press books yourself or other pressers, no, you have to use a specific type of paper, a specific type of board you know, and all the other things that go along with it. Um, but like I said, our time isn't going to change. We, we're yeah. going to spend the same amount of time on them. Um, like I said, your books are kind of our books. That's how we look at it. Um, we treat them like, you know, <coughs> excuse me. Um, you know, we, we truly try to treat them like how I'd want my books treated and the service I would expect. But like I said, unfortunately with, I mean, everybody knows what boards cost and, you know, plastics cost. And, you know, like I said, when I'm shipping them, I don't wrap them in a, you know, padded mailer from the post office and send them to you. You know, like my, my stuff, like, you know, Bronze Age has bought a ton of stuff from me. I knock on wood. I've yet to have something damaged from all the different small shipments. And that's whether you buy a $2 book or a, you know, $5,000 book, I'm going to ship it bubble wrapped, hard cardboard, sandwich, bagged and board, you know, um, it's not going to get damaged short of, well, I ain't going to say that because post office tends to do some pretty gnarly stuff <laughs> sometimes, but no, like, you know, packing material goes up. You know, when I send your books back to you, like I said, they're, they're going to be packed the way I would pack my books to send, you know, to send off. Yeah. And I can, I can personally vouch for that. And I've, I've done some of the unboxing stuff. I, I kind of do ahead of time for the videos, but some of that stuff you guys have seen on, on video as well. And, and it's definitely, um, you know, packed correctly, uh, uh, you know, no issues there. And uh, that kind of goes along, you know, we won't spend a ton of time on this, um, but GTQ was curious about if there's any particular ways you do want books sent to you as far as like bags and boards or mailers or anything like that. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. That, I, it's funny. Cause someone just asked me this and I sent them photos. Um, definitely bagged and board, fold the flaps down. I prefer the flaps taped down so they don't bend up and um, sandwich, you know, obviously alternate the spines um, sandwich, the, the comics use painter's tape. You don't need to crush them. Comic mailer, you know, gently tape it down. Don't need, like I say, you don't need to put it in a vice and tape it, but tape it down, bubble wrap it. And I prefer like a priority mailer. I mean, that's up to you, but inside another box um, yeah. and don't label anything that um, says they're comics. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah. People always look at me. They, I'm not looking at me, but they always like, I almost get a question mark, but there, there has been uh there was a rash of thefts from yep. boxes not in my area i heard it in another state 
um, he was stealing sports cards and things like that. So yeah, I tell people that's why I like when you hit me up, I give you my first and last name and it doesn't say Turlock comics and it goes to my house. I mean, just so you know, um, cause one, I know my male lady, she will not leave a package out. Like I know her really well. She knows my kids. She knows my wife. She knows like what I do and like, you know, we're friends. So she makes sure I sign for the package and that nice. someone's home and like, so yeah, but nothing that says that, but yeah, if you, if you need pictures on how to pack it, how I would suggest hit me up, I have them, I, you know, um, hit me up on Instagram, um, more than willing to show you how to pack everything right. So your books aren't damaged. Cause that's horrible. hundred <laughs> percent. Um, frog brawler. We were talking about the blue light chamber. Um, basically uh you know to kind of i don't know if you want to circle back to this but basically we're talking about um uh, page whitening um, yeah it's yeah it, it's for page whitening brightening up you can actually change the 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 page quality so if you have i'm not saying like i could take cream pages and turn them bright white but you know if a book has off white pages and you really want to get that white pages it is possible to change the page quality and brighten up the covers a bit Yep. And it's an often overlooked thing too that a lot of people kind of forget about that that does matter to a lot of collectors is you know, you take a nine eight with off white pages and a nine eight with white pages. Well, that white pages is gonna do better. <laughs> yeah, so it, it's an option that we do. Like I said, it tends to be more for the higher end books because it is it's it's rather time consuming. Yeah. Uh okay, so I do I do have to wrap up soon here and I do want to do our super chat prize. Um, what I think we kind of neglected to mention this. We talked about James background a little bit. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out, I think a lot of viewers on my channel know that, that something I really believe in supporting is, um, uh, veterans causes, first responders causes. Um, and I, I just wanted to take just a, a quick second to touch on that because Joey is a veteran. He's a military veteran. Um, and, uh, Kyle is too, right? Yeah. Kyle, Kyle, uh, Kyle's actually, a purple heart recipient with valor was actually put in for the medal of honor. I mean, straight savage, you know, like my hero. Um, so yeah. And now he works with the VA to help other veterans it's say awesome. I'm a veteran. I was in the Marines and army. I served on a, a sheriff's department. I've worked for the DEA overseas. Um, you know, and like I said, James is a retired police officer. So we're all service orientated and, Hence why we, you know, really support, uh, just to, to go off on a quick tangent. Uh, it's why we support like the Gary Sinise foundation and I have sales pretty much weekly. Um, this week I kind of got busy, but every week I usually try to put up a slab or a book and 50%, uh, of the sale price will go directly to the Gary Sinise foundation. I will provide you proof of the donation, whatever you want. Um, I will give you a shout out on Instagram if, you know, whatever you want to do, but it's 50% and the price is shipped to the U S. So if the book says $200 shipped $100 and I pay the fee to the donation society, $100 will go to the Gary Sinise foundation. And if you don't know about that, literally one of the most transparent organizations you can donate to, to help veterans, first responders, and, and honestly just citizens in the United States, he does a lot of work when there's floods, tragedies, things like that. Um, yeah. Super awesome. And, you know, we try to try to do our part to help out. For sure. And, and I mean, that's just, you know, something I like to highlight. Um, it's, it's one of those causes that I think is, is overlooked a lot um, by a lot of people for, for a lot of different reasons. I, some of them I understand, but it's really unfortunate to me. And it's something I really believe in. I've, I've worked closely with a lot of people who are either active duty or retired or, uh, you know, veterans and, and, and that includes first responders too, former law enforcement um, in a lot of different places I've worked before. And I just, I have a ton of respect for people that have made those kind of sacrifices. And I really want to see people, you know, treat, treat that group of people with respect because there's a lot of, um, you know, depression, mental illness, a lot of that kind of stuff that happens too. It's really unfortunate. And I think anything we can do to support that is fantastic. Uh, Joey in, in Turlock Comics is very active in that community as well, as you can see. And I think that's super important. Just something I wanted to talk about because um, I don't think we can talk about it enough, frankly. Um, so that's just something I wanted to mention real fast. Uh, awesome. We got some, I uh, uh, got a former Navy here or maybe current Navy with Rick James. 
Uh, awesome. Yeah. hundred uh, percent. I got a welcome home brother there for, for sure. Um, thank you. So that, that's fantastic. Um, so guys, uh, Joey, is there anything else you wanted to talk about? We didn't cover during the show. Anything else you wanted to mention? I mean, I probably forgot a million things, but like <laughs> I said, I'm always, I'm always like literally hit me up. Even just want to BS about, you know, anything comic military. I, I don't care. Kind of, yeah. you know, favorite right food. On. I don't really care. Hit me up. Any <laughs> questions? I don't, honestly, I truly don't mind. And I'm not just saying that. I, I truly don't mind answering any questions. There are no dumb questions because li- I've been there. I've, I've been that moron. I don't, I'm not saying moron. I don't mean that in a bad way. I'm referring to myself. Submitted books that made zero sense whatsoever. And <laughs> got completely ridiculously bad results. And, you know, so like I know, I know, you know, I've been, I've been there, been there, done that. And so any questions you have, and don't feel obligated like, oh, you talked to me, so now you have to submit books to me. I don't care. You, you yeah. want to just talk, feel out some options. You know, because there's a lot of good pressers out there. I'm not ragging on all of them. There's a lot of good ones. You know, so yeah, if you just want to talk, feel the waters, more than fine by me. Hit me up and, uh, more, you know, we'll talk. Absolutely. that That's awesome. I, I appreciate that. Especially just the last thing I'll say is kind of go back to that point about transparency and that is awesome to me that's just something that i gravitate towards like i want to do business with people that are upfront about what's going on uh and that's you know by far the number one thing i've enjoyed about about this uh this kind of you know relationship we've had i think it's really really cool and i you know we'll be seeing joey on the channel more i'm sure as, as time goes on maybe we'll do some of these special topics or talk about some announcements maybe as we get closer to the kind of an opening for the store for all sure. those different kinds of things it'll be kind of fun um Real fast before we get out of here, you guys did do some super chats for the super chat prize. So let's do a random number generator for this real fast and we'll uh, see who our winner is. Currently, I had $25 in super chats. I really appreciate that, guys. It does help. I uh, got a run- random number generator pulled up here. I'm going to hit that generate button three times and we will draw a winner for tonight's prize. There's one, two. All right. Good luck, everybody. Seven. Lucky number seven. And that is, let me uh, get rid of that. That is Preston. Let's see if I can get the light on that. Preston, uh, fantastic supporter of the channel. He gets the Super Chat prize for tonight. Congratulations, awesome. Preston. I'll get that sent off to you soon. I know where you live. <laughs> I send hey, more oh, my stuff away than anybody one else. One more little detail. Yeah. You're, um, we are going to offer a special pricing for your patreon subscribers so if they hit you up becomes you can tell them the pricing we'll leave cool. it a secret they got you know they, they will get some special pricing little little teaser for you guys there um so yeah if, if you guys are you know a channel member uh oh that's something i should mention actually before we let you go um uh joey just joined our discord server if you guys aren't familiar with the bronze age nerd discord server uh and he has his own channel over there He's still getting used to Discord. He's brand new to it, you know. So bear with us if there's any kind of like, you know, he didn't see your message or whatever. I'll try to try to ping him if I see anything not getting responded to over there. Um, uh, but it's a great place if you, if you want somewhere other than Instagram or email to ans- ask uh, the, the, to ask some of those questions. That's a great place to do that as well. Plus, you'll get opinions from some other people too. Like, hey, what do you guys think? Think I should grade this? You know, what service should I use? Any of that kind of stuff. We're happy to help you out with that. And I think it's another good way to kind of interface with, with Turlock Comics. And that's a great place to talk to uh, me about if you want some of that special member pricing too. <laughs> sure. Cool. Well, hey, thanks a lot, everybody, for joining along for this interview. I think it was a, a lot of good information for people out there. We answered a ton of really important questions that people had. And hopefully some people have kind of like a better understanding of what this process is all about. And they hit up Turlock Comics over on IG or through email or, or somewhere else. And uh, get those books sent in. (laughs) Awesome, guys. Have a great night, everybody. Talk to you later, Joey. Good night. Thanks for having me on. Later.